This snippet is adding navigation to buttons in Sketchflow. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft. In this snippet, you'll learn how to create interactive buttons in your Sketchflow projects using the Navigate To feature. Additionally, you'll learn how to add navigation to your components. So let's get started here. You're going to want to go ahead and open up the Snowboard Online project associated with the snippet. Once you open that document, you're going to want to double click on the board screen in your Sketchflow map in order to see this screen here. Now before we start adding navigation, let's go ahead and review the way that navigation works within the Sketchflow player. In order to do this, let's go ahead and choose Project, Run Project. Once your prototype appears in the Sketchflow player, remember that we navigate through this project using our Navigate panel. So here we can click on the welcome page and we go to our welcome page. Next, we might go to our boards page and here's our boards page. At the same time, we also have the ability to navigate to the home page at any time by clicking the home icon. Now, oftentimes the point of using this navigate panel is to identify potential problems that you might have in your workflow. At a certain point, however, you might have a client or a team member who would like to actually navigate within your document itself. So for example, here we can see our checkout button. Now, there actually is some interactivity here. When I mouse over that checkout button, you can see it changes to a light gray. When I click on it, it will turn dark gray. However, this does not go anywhere. So in order to get closer to the true user experience, what we'd like to do is enable this checkout button so that it actually goes to the checkout page. So let's go back to Sketchflow to do this. Go ahead and close your browser. And now we'll use the Navigate To feature to go ahead and navigate to the checkout page from the checkout button. In order to do this, go ahead and place your cursor over that checkout button and right click. Once you do that, you'll see a context menu. You want to go down to the very bottom and choose this option, Navigate To. All of the screens within your project will be available. And what we're going to do is navigate to the checkout screen. Go ahead and select that now. And let's go ahead and look at our checkout page. I'm going to double click on my checkout page. Now here you can see that we don't have a navigation bar at all. That's okay, however, we're going to create a new button that will actually be a back button. So when the user clicks on this button, they'll go back to the previous page. In order to do this, I'm going to go into my assets library. I'm going to expand the styles section and locate sketch styles. And then I'm going to find my sketch button and click and drag it and place it here on the right hand side of my screen. I'll then click the selection tool, double click on that button so that I can change it to back. Click anywhere in the background to deselect the button and then right click on that button and choose navigate to. Now this time, rather than going to a specific page, we're actually going to choose the generic command back. Let's go ahead and click that now. I'll go ahead and reposition this button slightly. Now, one other thing I'd like to point out here before we go to the next step. I'm going to go look at my Sketchflow map. I want to talk about visual tagging for just a moment. We can see here that our checkout page is a default navigation page and it's blue. There's two other pages that are linked to this page. Checkout successful, which if I double click on this, I can see a success message that represents a successful transaction. But then I also have a checkout error page. If I double click on this, I can see the screen that would appear if there was a problem with the transaction. Now turning our attention back to the Sketchflow map, we can actually change the color of these nodes here in the Sketchflow map so that they represent something. For example, I'm going to right click on my checkout successful screen. I'm going to go down to this command visual tag and I'm going to choose violet. Now what this might mean is that within my organization or my workflow, a violet screen represents a successful transaction or a successful login. I'll go ahead and right click on the checkout error screen, choose visual tag, and choose the red color. Now again, what this allows me to do is to easily identify those screens that might be successful or not successful. Okay, let's go ahead and double click on that checkout page again. And now let's go ahead and look at this in our Sketchflow player. I'm going to choose Project, Run Project. And then I'll go ahead and click on the Welcome Navigation. 
And then within that navigation screen, I'll click on Boards. Let's go ahead and click on Checkout. We automatically go to our Checkout page. Let's click on Back, and we go back to the Boards page. Now the last thing you'll do is enable a navigation on the navigation bars or the components. So in a previous snippet, we added a component that contains the common navigation across all of our screens. Let's go ahead and close the Sketchflow player. And returning back to Sketchflow, let's locate the nav bar component. Let's double click on that. And we're going to do the same thing here. For each one of these buttons, we're simply going to navigate to the respective page. So right click on the Boards button, choose Navigate to Boards, right click on Boots, choose Boots, right click on Bindings, choose Bindings, and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and choose Project, Run Project. Because we're using a component, that navigation feature should now be enabled across every screen that has the navigation bar. Click on your welcome page, and then click on the Boards button, and we go to Boards, click on Boots, go to Boots, Bindings, and so forth. Thank you for now. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.